Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest. Time for another Financial Year 23 result video. This is viewer inspired. Uh, these are all requests by viewers of this channel. And I do have to get a little bit of a move on because I still have a fair few to get through. And we've only got about six more weeks before we get into February reporting season. Hopefully I'll be able to get through most of these companies. Today I'll be featuring Polynovo. I've done a few videos on this company at least. I do like what this company is doing, but whether I like Polynovo as an investment remains to be seen. The reason I say that is because at the end of this video, I'll be telling you my thoughts on Polynovo. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to be doing this in a video, uh, telling you my thoughts, whether I think this is a good investment or even a bad investment right now, or just positive or negative on this company. Now, to give it a little bit away, I actually do like the company, the company Polynovo, what they are doing. Now, just because I like the company and what they are doing doesn't mean this is a good investment right now. And hopefully by the end of the video, I'll make that fairly, cute, fairly um, clear, my thoughts on the matter. Now, Polynovo develops uh, medical devices that utilize their uh, patented bioabsorbable polymer technology called Novosorb. Now, Novosorb is a family of medical grade polymers that can be expressed in a variety of physical formats. Novosorb polymers have properties such as biocompatibility compatibility, uh, and design flexibility. These properties underpin novel medical devices designed to support tissue rep repair before they biodegrade in situ into biocompatible byproducts via established pathways. Hopefully that's clear what this company does. Uh, so yeah, so we wish this company all the success in the future because they are doing something that I think can be very useful, uh, tissue repair, that sort of thing. A lot of applications, and because there's a lot of applications and this company has a lot of promise in what they're doing, the market understands that. And this company does have a fairly big valuation right now. So let's get into their financial year 23 results. Now, revenue, $66.5 million for Polynovo, up 59% from last year. And to be honest with you, the thing that does draw me in with this company is their impressive revenue growth. I'll touch upon that more later in the video. So up 59%, really great growth in revenue over the past five years. Unfortunately, the company is not yet Profitable. So this is a little bit of a red flag. The other little bit of red flag about their loss making uh, financials is it did seem like possibly they're on the cusp of becoming profitable last year. So only loss making to the tune of 1.3 million. However, the loss has actually amplified this year to $5.6 million. And one of the reasons why their profit amplified is because they had a pretty significant increase in employee related expenses. In fact, that increased by 84% to $39.4 million. And I think one of the reasons they really expanded their employees, and I'd say most of that expansion is for salespeople, is because they really want to grow their revenue. But that could be a minor misstep. Possibly, I'm just saying possibly, that they're focusing on revenue growth before uh, profitability and operating cash flow and free cash flow positiveness. Because even though they have gross margins of 93%, now, it is hard to find what the gross margins of this company are just by looking at financial statements. I went to a few other sites, and the gross margins of these other sites, Guru Focus, uh, QuickFS, ticker all, all had slightly different gross margins. And when you look at their financial statements, there's no indication what their gross margins were. So I made some uh, assumptions when I came up with my gross margins of this company of 93%. Now, gross margins of 93% just means there's a lot of flexibility moving forward for this company. If they wanted to, they could actually decrease their employees, possibly, and actually become profitable, that sort of thing. And I probably would prefer this company spend a little bit more money in advertising and marketing instead of employees, but that's just me. The other thing, the other red flag in regards to this company is the cash outflow. So $6.6 .6 million of operating cash outflow, which means free cash flow was negative $8.1 million. And because this company is burning through cash, they did do a cap raising in the last year. It was like a $50 million cap raising. And because of that cap raising, uh, the company still has a fair bit of cash on hand, $44 million. But that could be much smaller in a year or two if 
they don't control their spending. If revenue doesn't increase at a quicker rate than their spending, that's probably the most important thing. I want to see some scale in this company. And I shall show you a very important chart later in the video, which is another red flag when it comes to Polynovo. And that chart will show you how their revenue or how they're spending, actually, it's, I think it's operating expenses, how their operating expenses are growing at almost exact same rate as a revenue. And that is a little bit concerning to me. Polynovo has 690 million shares on issue and a share price of $1.62. The market cap of this company is $1.12 billion. Now, because this company is not profitable and they're burning through cash, that market cap says to me that the market is fairly convinced or confident, probably is a better word here, fairly confident is the market that this company can generate a mountain full of cash within the next few years. And it wants to to justify this sort of valuation. So if this company is not profitable and cash flow positive in five years time, I think uh, the market cap is going to be under a little bit of pressure uh, before then. Equity 65.4 million. And unfortunately, because this company is not profitable, uh, has no return, return on equity and return on investment capital are both negative. And of course, because this company is not profitable, they should not have a dividend. And of course they don't have a dividend. So no dividend yield. Now, as soon as I saw this particular graph, and I saw this, I, I think I even used this in one of my previous videos on this company. This is actually from their financial year 23 results presentation, I believe. This just shows you the growth in revenue in operating expenditure and net uh, whatever, uh, net loss after tax over the past five years. So really good increase in revenue. I'll show you another graph in uh, uh, the history of revenue for this company, which shows you the revenue all the way back to financial year 15, I believe. But just look at how operating expenses increases in line in revenue. It seems like the management of this company says, well, we're going to have revenue of, say, uh, $90 million in financial year 24. So we should be spending $90 million in operating expenses in financial year 24. Just because uh, this is just a, you know, they're almost perfectly in line revenue in operating expenses. So at this point in time, this particular graph shows me this company has no scale right now. Now, that could be on purpose. I just don't know. And that's the main thing I want to see in regards to Polynovo. I want to see some scale. I want to see revenue growing at a quicker rate than operating expenditures. And I think if they can show the market that, there is potential that the market of this company could grow even further from $1.12 billion. Now to some valuation metrics and how do we value this type of company that is not profitable and is not generating any uh, cash flow in operations or free cash flow, uh, in fact. So a lot of my more favored valuation metrics I just can't use because EV to operating cash flow. Well, operating cash flow is negative. Uh, free cash flow yield. Well, free cash flow is negative. Reverse DCF. Well, you know, operating cash flow, free cash flow, then earnings per share are all negative. So how can we say the amount they have to increase their uh, cash flow to justify the current valuation. We can't because it's all negative. But we can use price of sales, which is 16.8. I suppose we could even use price of book, which is 17.1. Uh, and you could argue that price of sales ratio 16.8 is a little bit stretched for this type of company. But that's probably for another debate. But I do prefer those other metrics. I do prefer uh, PE ratio. Definitely prefer EV to operating cash flow, EV to fresh cash flow, free cash flow yield to an, analyze the valuation or the current valuation of a company. You just can't do that with Polynovo right now because they're not profitable and they're not operating cash flow and free cash flow positive. But what they are doing is increasing their revenue. So it seems like the management right now is focused on revenue growth or just growth. Uh, and some parts of me would wish they would also focus on profits and cash flow. But beautiful increase in profits since 2014 from an almost zero all the way up to 65.7 million. This is exactly what you want to see for any company. But if you look at the profit for this company over the past 10 years, it's always been negative. Every single year, it's been negative. That's what we want to see change for this company moving forward. Now to the charts for this company. We're going to look at the daily chart here and also weekly chart in the next slide. And if you look at the daily chart, nothing much to take away from this. The share price has been a little bit volatile. Over the past, this goes back two years, which is understandable because the valuation of this company is 1.12 billion. And you're going to see uh, a share price of a company value like that that is not profitable 
and is not generating in cash flow in operations to be quite volatile because it's really hard to uh, calculate a true value of this company. You just can't do it at this point in time because any inputs you put into, say, a DCF is going to be wildly different from each other. And for a company like Polonovo, you want to do a wide range of different scenarios moving forward. And if you did that, you might have a valuation of $1 a one minute, $10 another minute, and then maybe one cent the next minute. So uh, it's almost impossible to do DCF on this type of company because you just don't know the inputs moving forward to put into that DCF. Anyway, so that's why you will see this wild ride when it comes to a company like Polynovo. Share price has been as low as, not having, as low as uh, below $1 back in May of 2022. And as high as almost $2.75 in February of 2023. And right now, if you just look at the, the short term, the last few months, the share price is starting to look like it's wanting to move into an uptrend. So maybe in the short to medium term, that's a good sign. So maybe if you're just looking at a very short period of time to trade this company, maybe now's the time to think about taking position in this company. And as we turn our attention to the weekly chart for Polynovo, this is, well, a much different look because uh, this goes back to when the company IPO'd or listed on the ASX back in 2000, was it 2014? And if uh, you do or were a shareholder of this company between, say, about 2017 and 2021, you'd probably think this is one of the greatest companies alive because a beautiful uptrend. Share price of this company increased from about $0.30 cents all the way to a high of about $4. So this could have been a bet 10 bagger for some investors, particularly those investors who sold near the top. And um, you probably might say it would be fairly fortuitous to sell near the top because it didn't stay there for very long. But you also can see by the weekly chart how volatile the share price has been over the past three to four years. And again, the main reason behind that is because this company is not profitable, is not generating any cash flow, yet has a market well above $1 billion. In fact, when the share price of this company got to about $4, I still remember the markup of this company was insane. It was like $3 billion or something outrageous like that. Now onto my thoughts in regards to Polynovo. So I do like the company, uh, what they're doing. I think this company has a lot of potential, but because I think they have a lot of potential and the market thinks they have a lot of potential, there is a high valuation attributed to this company. And the question becomes right now, can we justify the current valuation of $1.12 billion? It is hard to do that. Uh, even if you're fairly bullish on this company moving forward, you'd have to be to justify the current valuation. Now, there is a scenario out there where this company uh, is significantly bigger in about five to 10 years. If they hit that inflection point of becoming uh, of finding some scale, uh, increasing or continue to increase their revenue at a very impressive state, but increase their expenditure at a much less state, this company could be highly profitable in a few years time. And the main word there is could be. So the market thinks highly of this company right now. I probably don't think as high as the market. And one of the reasons I don't think as highly about this company as the market right now is just the lack of profitability and the lack of any cash inflows. It deals cash outflow. So this company is burning through a lot of cash right now. If this company was profitable, if this company was generating cash flow in the operations and was free cash flow, even if the share price or the valuation of this company was just above $1 billion, because of this company's impressive growth over the past five years, I could see myself thinking about taking a position in this company right now. So it all comes back to profitability and cash flow for me. The next five companies I plan to do in this series include DGL, which is a chemicals company. I look forward to doing uh, or have a look at that company's financial year 23 results. Haven't done it yet. Laser Bond and then Sunrise Rice with a very interesting ticket code, SGLLV. I have not had a look at that company before. So very excited to have a look at a company I have never looked at before. Coventry Group, which did release a really good, maybe not really good, but did release a positive training update on the 18th of December. And Maggie Beer. Now, I have never drinken Maggie Beer, the liquid, but I'm pretty sure that is Maggie Beer in terms of the chef. And I'm pretty sure I have actually eaten some of the ice cream that is produced by Maggie 
But yeah, it did go away for a while, and now it's back on Woolworths' shelf. So really looking forward to do a video on Maggie B because a few years ago, there was some interest in this company, and the share price went on a really nice run. But the share price has pulled back a fair bit since that nice run a few years ago. So look forward to doing a little bit of research on Maggie Beer, the company, not the person. That's all I have for this look at Polly Novo's financial year 23 results. If you are a shareholder of this company, I'd love to hear your thoughts on why you are a shareholder of Polly Novo. Uh, are you as bullish as a market? Do you think $1.12 billion a market cap is a justified for this company, even though they're not profitable and generating cash flow? And maybe you could persuade me Maybe that's a possibility because I am pretty open-minded. I do change my mind a lot. So maybe you could change my mind. And if you can change my mind, I'll actually do a video on that. So anyway, leave your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I am not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.